James E. Williams knew that time was running out for him and his team. Their two patrol boats had been ambushed by more than 50 Viet Cong sampans at the Mekong Delta, and enemy fire was tearing the gunboats apart. Still, Williams kept his temper and ordered his men to do the impossible, race straight through the enemy formation to avoid being encircled. The crewmen from the Brownwater Navy doubted but trusted their captain and braced themselves to get close and personal with the enemy. They desperately needed helicopter support, but nobody knew if they'd arrive on time, or at all. Moments later, the two boats dashed across the area and faced their foes head on. It was now or never, and they needed to throw away as many enemies and sampans as they could if they wanted to make it out alive. Brownwater Navy. The term Brownwater Navy originated during the American Civil War in the 1860s. To cripple the economy and area of operations of the Confederate States, Union General Winfield Scott prepared the Anaconda Plan, which involved blocking the harbors of the southern states and then pushing along the Mississippi River with Union forces. To achieve this, General Scott worked with the Navy to establish a new river force of terrifying ironclads and gunboats that would ravage Confederate forts and cities along the Mississippi. These boats were referred to as the Brownwater Navy because of the river's muddy appearance. Brownwater Navy boats were briefly used in China during the 1920s and 1930s as part of the American Asiatic Fleet. These American gunboats or riverboats patrolled Chinese rivers to safeguard foreign interests in the region. Still. Most of them were captured after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, and none were deployed during World War II or the Korean War. They would have to wait until the outbreak of the Vietnam War in 1965 to make a comeback. The River Patrol Force During the first months of the Vietnam War, the U.S. Army and Marine Corps realized that taking control of the rivers that connected North and South Vietnam was vital. The North Vietnamese Army and their guerrilla, the Viet Cong, often used rivers to transport food, ammunition, weapons, and other supplies from one region to another without any American opposition. From simple sampans used by villagers to bigger boats, the enemy used these vessels to conceal supplies. Additionally, pirates and contrabandists infested river towns and cooperated with the communists. Consequently, on December 18, 1965, the United States Navy formally introduced the Brownwater Navy in Vietnam. The boats would be part of the River Patrol Force and the Mobile Riverine Force. Together, the U.S. Army and Navy would conduct joint operations to stop the flow of North Vietnamese troops, supplies, and communications into South Vietnam. The Army and Navy took inspiration from the DNSO, or French Riverine Force, coastal patrols of the First Indochina War. The Mobile Riverine Force was tasked with not just fighting the enemy in the Vietnamese rivers, but also transporting soldiers, marines, and supplies to military outposts across Indochina. Also called the Riverines, their main base of operations was at Dong Tan Base Camp in the Mekong Delta River. Meanwhile, the River Patrol Force supported Task Force 116, a unit of 250 boats, most of which comprised the Patrol Boat Riverine Boat, or PBR. During the first months of 1966, the Brownwater Navy was composed of converted landing craft from World War II or modified small commercial boats. Still, the armed forces would quickly deliver authentic warboats with lethal equipment. Fighting the Mekong the Army soldiers and Navy sailors that patrolled the rivers of Vietnam were tough men who fought at different combat fronts simultaneously. First and foremost, the men had to deal with the ambiance. Then there was the solitude. Once a boat made its way into inland waterways, they got little to no sun, and the sailors could only rely on their fellow boatmates. More importantly, there was the enemy, who knew the terrain well. The North Vietnamese were masters at blending with the jungles and forests, and like the many serpents found in Vietnam, they knew when to strike. River patrols were often attacked when they were most vulnerable, especially when patrol boat sailors stopped alongside Vietnamese sampans to check for contraband. 
The lightly armored boats were built for speed and constant movement, but lacked armored protection, and all types of grenades caused a lot of damage in the American ships. The most used gunboats were the Armored Troop Carrier, or ATC, the ASPB, and the patrol boat Riverine, or PBR. The PBR was the most used vehicle of them all, and was made of a small fiberglass hull and manned by a crew of four. It saw action for the first time as part of Operation Game Warden in March of 1966 to deny the Viet Cong access to resources in the Mekong Delta. The River Patrol Boat The small PBR patrol boat came in two variants, the Mark I and Mark II, the latter of which had a length of 12 feet, one foot longer than its predecessor. Both had a beam of 11.5 feet and a draft of 2 feet. The PBR displaced 14,600 pounds and was propelled by two jacuzzi water jet pumps powered by two General Motors 220 horsepower diesel engines that resulted in speeds of over 20 and 30 knots. In addition, the boat was equipped with a Raytheon Pathfinder surface search radar and two ANVRC-46 radios. In the hands of an able captain, the PBR was fast, highly maneuverable, and responsive. Offensive armament comprised a twin 50 caliber machine gun in a forward turret and a single 50 caliber MG located aft. Plus, a 40 mm grenade launcher and an M60 machine gun were found on port and starboard amidships. The 31 foot fiberglass hull was resistant to Toreto worms and other marine borers found in the Vietnamese rivers. Still, it was not immune to shrapnel from RPGs and other explosives, but armor plates did protect the engines and the coxswain's flat. The four-man crew comprised a boat captain, seaman, engine man, and gunner's mate, all of whom often carried M16s, shotguns, M79 grenade launchers, a starlight night vision device, and a 60mm mortar. James E. Williams It was common to spot Navy lieutenants commanding river patrol operations across the Mekong. Such patrols often comprised two boats to face the enemies together. The soldiers and sailors were used to being overwhelmed and outnumbered by the North Vietnamese, but what they lacked in manpower, they made up for in firepower. Still, the PBR boats were highly vulnerable when they turned on their searchlights during night operations. The heroism of PBR crews was admirable. Historian and river water veteran Tom Cutler said that the PBR, quote, proved to be a fierce little combatant. The boats and the men who fought in them were truthfully characterized as proud, brave, and reliable. And Petty Officer First Class James E. Williams, in command of River Patrol Boat 105, was one of them. In May of 1966, Williams was assigned to the River Patrol Force and given command of PBR 105. Then, on October 31st, he was given a specific mission, to hunt down Viet Cong guerrillas located in an isolated sector of the Mekong Delta near Mai Tu. When PBR 105 and PBR 107 approached the area, the duo was greeted by small arms fire from a hostile sampan. Williams ordered them to return the fire, and they eliminated one of the enemy occupants. Still, the sampan fled to an adjacent smaller river, and they went after it. Little did they know that they were walking straight into a trap. Survival As the two PBRs went after the damaged enemy sampan, they were greeted by a second one emerging from the waterway. The enemy sampan crew then opened fire with their AK-47 rifles and RPK machine guns, prompting a pursuit that quickly turned into a full-fledged combat encounter. Moments later, Williams ordered both boats to flee the waterway, but it was too late. A heavy volume of assault rifle and machine gun fire began pummeling the two American boats from well-concealed positions on both sides of the riverbanks. Williams then ordered his men to fire at will with everything they had. As the men fought their way out of the trap, the PBRs were confronted by more hostile Viet Cong, armed to the teeth aboard two junks. PBR-105 and PBR-107 were outnumbered and outgunned in a matter of minutes. And to make matters worse, over eight other sampans showed up behind the two junks. Williams then got in the way of the hostile fire to help his men direct their mortar rounds and grenade launcher shots to where the enemy concentrated the most. He knew mobility was vital to survive the onslaught and made a shocking decision, calling his comrades to break through the enemy formation at top speed. The two patrol boats then crashed at high speed right through the Viet Cong formation, 
smashing some sampans along the way and sending enemy soldiers into the water. Soon after, Williams repositioned PBR-105 and 107 and continued firing 50 caliber rounds toward the enemies, who were still recovering from the Americans' unexpected maneuvers. Williams then called on air support through the radio, as the crewmen continued firing their M16s and grenade launchers to decimate the approaching Viet Cong. However, it was going to take some time for the helicopters to arrive, valuable time that Williams and his men lacked as they sighted an even more significant concentration of hostile enemy boats coming to encircle them. River Patrol Boat 105 As Williams and his men were tearing apart the wooden sandpans by the dozens, it was time to move out before they were entirely surrounded. Once again, PBR-105 and PBR-107 raced through the enemy boats, and they had a close call with an RPG round that damaged their hulls with shrapnel. Still, the boats were ready to go. Williams kept ordering his men to concentrate fire on the closest enemy boats to take them down more efficiently, which they did with devastating effect. As more than 50 enemy sampans started to sink, the Viet Cong casualties began to mount. Wounded and drained by the adrenaline, Williams and his crewmen kept firing until their main ammunition began to run dry. Soon, UH-1 Huey helicopters showed up to support the patrol boats, and the Hueys began to clean up the river with their M60s and rocket launchers. Williams and his men then returned to the ambush area to finish the surviving enemies. By then, night had fallen, and he ordered his men to turn the boat searchlights on to spot the Viet Cong. While the helicopters focused on the river craft, the two patrol boats got dangerously close to the shore to better illuminate the area and eliminate the enemies hiding there. The crewmen then engaged them with their M16s, combat shotguns, and their last mortar rounds. After three hours of relentless combat, the river ambush was finally over. The survivors had run away, and over 65 enemy boats had been destroyed, with over 1,000 enemy casualties. James E. Williams was awarded the Medal of Honor on May 14, 1968, for his courage and leadership, shown during the October 1, 1966 patrol mission. Meanwhile, the Brownwater Navy and its brave Army and Navy crews would continue fighting across the rivers of Vietnam, and many patrol boats would become essential for delivering and extracting special forces, such as the Green Berets and NACB SOG personnel, during classified operations as the war came to an end. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.